Good morning. How are you? My name's Linda and currently I'm in Brisbane, Australia. How are you today? And have you been doing your SMART goals this week? There's videos down below in the new newsfeed about SMART goals, how to set them and what you may find happening. But today I want to talk to you about recovery. Recovery from trauma, specifically childhood trauma and what we need to aim for in recovery. Uh, I'm your trauma recovery coach and I try and give you as much information as possible. Hi Charlene! In order that when you work with a therapist or you work with a trauma informed coach that you can put language around what it is you want to achieve, what it is that's happening for you and where to go from here. Now, if we look at recovery as a journey of, well, we could say a thousand steps, but it's a bit more than that, <laughs> then we're going to come to a place of acceptance where we don't have to have things done perfectly. We can come to a place where we can actually be excited about the fact that we can be educated and equipped to know where we want to take as an, as an individual our one next step. Now, I encourage you to make notes when I talk so that you can go, aha, you've had an aha moment and you can take it and discuss it with your therapist or coach in order that you can have or receive personalized strategies for your next step. And that's what therapy and coaching is for. It's for you so that you can have individualized strategies around where your next step is, what you need to do, how you can do it, etc, etc. Okay, so let's have a look at, this is going to be part one. Oops, wrong one, that's the old one. <laughs> this is the new one. Okay, so we're going to look at suggested recovery intentions and this is from the gorgeous book by Pete Walker. He's at the forefront of healing from complex PTSD, okay? So if you get this book, it is user-friendly and it also does have step-by-step -step for everything that you'd like to do. And again, you can take it to your therapist or your coach and go, this is what I really identify with today. This is what I need to know more about and this is what I need to know more about how it's affecting my life and how I can take the next step forward. And I want you to always remember with complex PTSD, talk therapy isn't the best way to go about it. They've proved it scientifically now, which is good because then it can flow on into specialist areas that talk therapy, which a lot of the different types of therapy are based on from decades is talk therapy and different ways to go about it, okay? In order to have talk therapy, they first had to prove what would and wouldn't work and how it wouldn't work, and there's a lot that goes into it, okay? So now with complex PTSD, even though it isn't in the DSM-5, which is what, a, well, worldwide, everyone looks to to get, to be able to diagnose it is out there and the more that we talk about it, the more that we inform you, the more the on-flow will be to gaining a greater understanding that it is different to any other mental health challenge and we need to go about it in the reverse direction, okay? So now that we've reached a stage where we understand that for us, complex PTSD is you know, has ruled so much of our life, even though it's not who I am. The DSM-5 is the Diagnostics and Statistical Manual that um, people like psychologists, psychiatrists, uh, all specialists in this field, they look to to see if you've got X, Y, and Z in any particular area to diagnose you with whatever condition they perceive that you have. So whether it's anxiety, depression, bipolar, um, borderline personality disorder, schizophrenia, PTSD, and so much more. And they actually, uh, there was a big furor about the DSM-5 when 
they put autism and Asperger's in together under the one category of autism. So this is what uh, a specialist will use when you go to see them to give you a diagnosis of any particular mental health challenge, which is the area that we're talking about. Complex PTSD has made it into the ICD-11. Now, the ICD-11 is the World Health Organization version of the DSM-5. So complex PTSD has now been put into there, but not into the DSM-5 yet. It took them, I can't remember how many years now, but a lot of years before the DSM-5 actually came out. So they're not going to want to change it overnight either. That's the struggle we face. So hence why I get on and inform you as much as I can because we need to be able to go to our specialists and say, hey, this is what's really happening for me. You know, it's not um, because borderline personality disorder of, um, often gets misdiagnosed for complex PTSD and there's a whole range that goes on with that. So we want to be more informed. The more informed we are, we can say to our specialists, well, no, that's not happening, etc., etc." Okay? So in our life, when we've had childhood trauma, which is any form of abuse, um, specifically physical, emotional and sexual abuse in childhood, plus and or neglect, childhood neglect, and childhood bullying, these are all now listed, uh, and um, sex trafficking as well is now listed under uh, uh, forms of abuse, okay? And sex trafficking is happening in first world countries as well. Very sad, but it is. Now, normal and safe wants and needs to wish and hope for to cultivate with mental, spiritual, and emotional energy. Now, we, we need to remember that in science, they have actually identified not just our emotional brain, but our spiritual brain, and we know the prefrontal cortex is where we process everything mentally, okay? So we want to work with all three sides of this, and in order to do that, what we want to do, when we go through a list like this, is we want to be able to say, hmm, I can see that that's missing from my life. I need more of that. So we want to cultivate more of that in our life. We don't, go, we don't want to go back and talk about endlessly uh, where it wasn't in our life, um, why it wasn't in our life, how it wasn't in our life, and so on. As we go through the process of the rebuild and identifying what's not in our life, the what I like to call the held on to energy, the emotional energy that comes with what we didn't have automatically comes up when we're going through the process of therapy and coaching anyhow. So we don't need to focus on it. What we need to focus on is where we're going and what we do need, and what I do want. So with one of my clients, she wanted to and needed to get work so that she could move out of home, this is as an adult, in order that she would stop living under, one, all the family rules, the family mythology that says you have to be this way in order to be accepted, and so much more that goes on with living at home. Now, she did have to go home because she had nowhere after a broken marriage. But then we wanted to rebuild her in order that she can see this is what I need next, all right, and this is what I'm headed for. And as we build these positive aspects into her life that she needs, okay, then she is able to then have the strength to say and determine this is where I'm going and not be hijacked by triggers. This is the key thing. We want our brain to be trained in it's okay that I'm allowed to say these are the things I need. This is take even if you take one from this list and you work with your mental, spiritual and emotional energy to build it into your life every day, 
you will find that triggers, anxiety and depression will become less and less and less over time the more you work at doing recovery things like this. Okay, so make you can make them into an affirmation about this is what I want. You can put it up. Um, I haven't got any out at the moment, but I have little cards. Like you can even go to Officeworks and you can get little cards like about that big and put the affirmations up everywhere if you wanted to because one of the causes that comes from all of this is a lack of memory. Oh boy, I had zero memory. Like it was just impossible. And one of the things I did for zero memory was get online and do things like uh, brain training games. And that does help because we're forcing our thought patterns to move in a different way. And, and it really helped me regain a lot of memory. Another part of regaining memory also is as we do this work and we build so much more of this energy into us, then we find, well, I've certainly found, it's like whole libraries of words just open up within my brain. You know, I get a whole library full of vocabulary back that I hadn't had. It, it, it had gone. Okay. So if we look at the first one, I want to develop a more constantly loving and accepting relationship with myself. Now, we can't just go, oh, yeah, poo-poo. We can't poo-poo these things. Because one, one of the major things that we need to do on a daily basis is recognize where we blame ourselves, where we try to keep things perfect, and we want to get into a place of self-compassion. If loving sounds a bit out there, let's do self-compassion. I want to have compassion on myself that as an adult, today I'm doing my best, all right? I want an increasing capacity for self-acceptance. And I want you to think about these two from the place of neglect. If you weren't shown physical love as a child, a lot of this can come under that as well. Needing the sense of touch. So self-acceptance can also come in with the sense of touch. I'm accepting myself. When I was severely obese, uh, I went, this isn't about being obese. This is about me going right. I need a level of self-acceptance and confidence within myself, irrespective of what I look like. Okay, so this is about getting inside and, and right down to the core of who I am. I want to learn to become the best possible friend to myself, so don't treat everybody else like gold and ignore ourselves, which we can do. We can find ourselves doing everything for everyone else and ignoring ourselves. We, we do a lot of things in reverse, so now we've got to reverse them back. I want to attract into my life relationships that are based on love, respect, fairness and mutual support. I want to uncover a full uninhabited, uninhibited, uninhabited, we can't uninhabit ourselves, uninhibited self-expression. I want to attain the best possible physical health. It may not be perfect, but it's the best one. So at the moment I go, right, this is, this is my best health at the moment but I will always keep aiming for a better mental health for me. I want to cultivate a balance of vitality and peace. One of the things that we can do is be go, 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 and completely forget that we need peace too. Okay, we've got to feel comfortable sitting in our peace. All right. And that's something that I have to consciously work on is sitting in the peace and it's okay to stop and be at peace. All right. We often want to think we're Wonder Woman, but really we're just human. So we've got to sit in the peace. I want to attract to myself loving friends and a loving community. And this is one of the things that we do when we've lost everything, we lose all our trust. So we have to rebuild trust in ourselves and be around people who we can sit back and just be ourselves. I was in a community for quite a number of years, and I'm still in that community. But when I was there initially, I couldn't talk, okay? I couldn't express myself. Um, I couldn't join in, but I could sit there. I could be with them. Um, I could turn up to barbecues and just help out the mums and hold the babies. There are things that we can do even though... 
we might may get triggered or we can't talk or we can't communicate or social socially we're just crippled all right but we can have a go i promise you we can have a go i want increasing freedom from toxic shame toxic shame is what got handed down to us and given to us by definitely by childhood sexual abuse and i have done a couple of videos on that uh, hit me up down below, let me know if you want the links to them because they're very powerful stuff about what really happened to us on the inside. I want increasing freedom from unnecessary fear. I can tell you if there's one thing that's really ticked me off all these years is knowing that the fear that was smothering me is not mine. It's not who I am and I got really fed up with it. I want rewarding and fulfilling work. That won't happen overnight, but as we work towards health and as we work towards giving ourselves what we need and not looking to others for it, the work unfolds, it unpacks and just start with something that you enjoy, you know, online. Like I enjoy sharing with people, so it builds itself up over time. I want a fair amount of peace of mind, body, mind, spirit, soul and body. And we do, okay? Uh, living on hypervigilance all my life left my whole body like this, okay? It, it was the only wonder that I had no peace because my brain was just spent this whole time on wanting to be safe, okay? So we can work towards these. Remember, choose one and even just choose one for this week. Uh, I will put the list down below underneath the video so that you can screenshot it, you can keep it with you, you can access it at any time. Remember, take the information to your therapist or coach so that you can have strategies around how to go about achieving it. And I will come back tomorrow morning with part two of this. So if any of the list didn't resonate with you, that's okay. We have more and I just want to wish you a great day. Thanks for joining in and I will see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.